Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is The Adventures of Robin Hood by Cosmos. This is a two to four player cooperative game that plays roughly about 60 minutes per adventure and is for ages 10 and up. And in the game, The Adventures of Robin Hood, you are playing as Robin Hood or one of Robin Hood's many friends, whether it be Will Scarlet, Maid Marian, or Little John, as you attempt to uncover dark secrets from the new King of Nottinghamshire. As he attempts to head into the castle, you and your friends are going to move around the game board in this sandbox-like game, discovering and fighting guards, attempting to solve the mysteries that each campaign is going to let you do. Um, now, like I said, this is a unique sandbox experience where you'll be able to move anywhere on the game board and start asking people questions, uh, discovering unique pieces to the puzzle for your specific campaign. You'll be able to gather rewards such as like honey or utilizing your abilities to steal things from noblemen like swords and uh, unique battle horns and so on and so forth as you attempt to complete the scenario. Now, all the while, Little John is plotting his revenge, and every round of play, you're going to encounter some bad luck. You'll be losing time from a bad end, and when these time tokens are removed, the game can end in not such a good way. As well as, of course, Nottinghamshire can lose hope. There is a hope track on the board that will progressively go down to zero, and if you can't keep it up long enough, then the time markers will start running out even faster. Can you solve the campaign's requirements before time runs out and little John takes victory? Find out in this really cool two to four player cooperative game that's very unique with its own book for this storyline adventure. Now because each campaign plays out a little differently and adds more and more rules, kind of like a legacy game, I'm going to have to refrain from telling you too much about the story and all the different things that you can do in it. So I'll basically just give you the first one or two scenarios worth of information and I think you'll be good from there. As far as setup goes, it's pretty easy. You're going to take out all the game boards, which comes separately uh, from a unique little uh, thing that you get in the box. And they'll look kind of like this. And you'll place them all down and connect them to form the map of the board. On these boards, you'll notice that there are certain pieces that you can pull out and you can put back in to the game board. Uh, and it will tell you in the rules how everything is going to be starting off in the game, which characters we flip face down or which locations we flip face up and all that kind of stuff. You're going to have a hope track as well, which might start on 17 for the first mission, but it might be different on subsequent missions. There'll be a certain number of these time counters that you will put on the book and the book is going to represent the bad end. That's how you lose the game. It's basically a countdown timer for how long you have. You're also going to be getting these little tokens here. Uh, these tokens are going to represent the good and evil forces in Nottingham working uh, together as you try and defeat, or not working together, but functioning together as you try and defeat guards. Basically, in combat, you'll be removing these little guys from the bag, white ones and these, these purple ones or violet ones. And if you can remove a white one and not all purple ones, then you'll defeat guards and gain value, such as hope. Additionally, you'll start with your characters. Now, in the first specific campaigns, you'll have to start with specific characters, but as you go along, you'll be able to choose whatever characters that you want. But typically, you're always going to be playing with Robin Hood, and he'll be placed on the game board based on where the scenario tells you to place him. And then you're gonna have all the rest of the wooden pieces, and you can just set them aside somewhere. It doesn't really matter where, because anybody can choose to play with any of the little pieces that they want, and typically you're only going to need one character in the game. Everything else kind of functions together, and this will move the game along. The top right-hand side is going to usually have a countdown marker as well, which will indicate what guards are moving and what noblemen might pop up, but that's more on that later. So basically for setup, just place it all down, and it'll explain it to you wonderfully in this game book. Additionally, there is a Welcome to Sherwood Forest placard, which is just going to give you the basic essentials of how you set the game up, which basically will tell you everything you need to know about movement, but that's how I'll, what I'll cover in gameplay. So we'll go ahead and get into the gameplay of the game. I'll give you a little bit of what it's got going on so you understand where my review is coming from, and, and then you can go ahead and pick up the game for yourself if you'd like.
All right, so playing the game is quite simple. You'll start off the scenario by looking at the booklet. And in the book, it's going to tell you, I should say the book, not a booklet, of the different missions and the adventures that you'll partake in and what page to start your adventures on. The first one is the escape, which will tell you how much hope is in the land, uh, how much time you have to succeed the mission, uh, what characters will be in the mission, such as Robin Hood and where he'll be in the forest, and such as Little John, who'll be stuck somewhere on the gallows, but, but guarded by a guard and maybe it'll tell you which guards to flip over on the game board. And it'll be like, okay, put this guy on this space on the guard here. And from there, it will then tell you what tokens to put in the bag. It could be these white and purple tokens, purple representing the bad guys and white representing the good guys that are you, which you'll use when you battle. And it could also tell you to place in these discs. It'll tell you a disc for each of the players playing the game. So for instance, if I am playing with uh, Little John and I am also playing with Robin Hood, then I put in the yellow and the green disc. And maybe it'll also tell you to put in like a gray disc that will let you have a, a turn for any player. And then also a red one, which rep will represent uh, the uh, Prince John, the, the bad guy. And you know, put all these discs in here. And turns work pretty simply. And then there's two actions you can basically take on your turn, but eventually there will be more actions in the game. Uh, the first thing you do is when you pull out one of these tokens here, like for instance, I can pull out that one there, I'll then get to take the turn of a player of my choice. Or if it was a green one, it would be Robin Hood, or the yellow would be Little John. And how it works is you move first, and we'll just say that I chose Robin Hood. I can move first and then take one of two actions. I can also, when I choose to move, I put these little guys next to each other and I can kind of attach them together. I can't go through trees or the forest, uh, spaces, I can't go through rocks, I can't go through waterfalls or through rivers, I can't go over people, so you have to walk like a normal player in this sandbox type game. And I'll move, I'll have my one character on one side and I'll take my other character and place him here, which will represent the movement on the game board. I'll remove the other pieces and then I can take my action. Now, one of the actions is if I land on a guard, I can fight the guard, and the other is if I land on a space with a question mark, I can interrogate the space. It'll have a number on the character representing the space. I'll check in the book what the character does and choose an option or just read the story and do what it says on that specific page. Each of the different adventures will have something unique for what that character does. So in one case, the uh, master, the forest, is going to give you some useful information about where to go, or maybe he will tell you, Prince John is coming and you need to do this. And so each of the adventures kind of represents a different thing that the character that you're meeting does, which means you'll have multiple uses of these tokens on this game board here. The other action that you can take is, well, let's say I, I drew out the Little John token, in which case I can fight a guard. Now I'm stuck on a guard here, and so the only thing I can do when I'm stuck on a guard is I can pull out these little small cubes from the bag here. I can only pull out three total, or up to three I should say, and I'll pull them out until I get a white cube. Now if I were to pull out one, two, and three cubes, and I did not get a white cube, then that means I would still be stuck. But as long as I got that white cube on or before the third cube, I would remove all cubes. And then I'd flip over the guard, I'd gain any bonuses that the guard would give me, which is usually just going to be a hope. And then I'm able to freely move again. So uh, basically, that's the main aspects to the game. Now there are things that change the game and things that kind of incorporate unique little circumstances here and there. Um, and there is ways to gain certain things. So in this case here, the tutorial mode basically would tell me on my next time that I draw a little John piece, I can move over here to this gallows area. I notice that there's a rope. I can go ahead and inspect that space. And maybe that rope is gonna provide me with a way out of the castle. In which case, I would also be noted by the guy in the forest who's like, hey, Robin Hood, you need to move all the way around this castle here. And you need to get over to Little John as quickly as possible because basically what happens as you draw these big cubes out here, uh, whenever the red one is drawn, you'll do whatever it says. Sometimes it'll just be kind of a continuous loop, like lose this much time, lose this much hope, put in this many cubes into the bag. Maybe it'll say something like, Prince John is coming, flip over this tile here on the game board, and then the next time you do another red one of these tokens, it'll show that Prince John is now arriving, and flip over this one and, and, unfl and unflip over that one. And then remove the time, add the cubes, etc., etc. So that's really like shows how the story progresses as the bad guys move on. 
Uh, there are also going to be times in the game where it'll tell you, hey, when you draw that red uh, disc, you'll put in a purple disc. And now whenever the purple disc is drawn, maybe for instance, a big bad guy is going to show up somewhere in the city. And he's actually going to be moving, attempting to get to the players, following all the same rules as movement as any of our characters do. But his objective is to get to one of us. And if he does, he'll make us lose one of our movement pieces for the rest of the game. So there's going to be characters that are going to be chasing you along with having to deal with the time to kind of experience the game board and figure out what you need to do in the game. When you run out of these tokens from the bag here, once you've pulled all of them out, uh, then you're just going to go ahead and take them all and put them back in. So it's a rinse and repeat of whatever tokens um, represent the game. Uh, these are the tokens that you're then going to go ahead and take and put back and rinse and repeat. And you'll continuously do this moving around the game board until you solve the puzzle or the mystery of the specific scenario that you're playing. Or <laughs> you'll take the bad end. In which case, for certain scenarios, you can just go ahead and rinse and repeat and restart. Or you can continue moving through the story with the bad end. Um, and usually what happens is if you start over on the same scenario because you were not able to successfully defeat it, you'll flip over a marker on the game board indicating that you're now attempting that mission the second time. Which means that the characters will actually interact with you differently comparatively to the first time. Because you weren't able to successfully achieve the mission goal, maybe the Guardian of the Forest doesn't need to tell you the same information again, so maybe he's going to give you some boon or reward to help you progress throughout the storyline. And yeah, that's basically the idea of the game. You'll progress from one story to the next story. It'll tell you what characters to flip and which characters not to flip. Eventually, it's going to incorporate more things for the round, like flipping over tiles and placing them down in this long line here, which will then start flipping over guards, creating new guard locations around the map. Some will flip down, some will flip face up. If a guard is ever flipped face up in an area that is in kind of the non-shade and your character is also there, that guard will capture your character. And the same is said for any spaces out in the forest as well. Um, and there are ways that the guards will flip down. There's ways that you'll add timers to the guards when you defeat them. You're gonna uh, come across noblemen as well. When you come across noblemen in the forest, you're going to be flipping them face down to hopefully defeat them. And you'll gain rewards, such as items in the game, like this rope and this sword and this horn. And as the game progresses, the rules will change. It'll change as to what you can get. Now you can get all these items, bows and arrows and axes and treasure chests and cloaks and uh, swords, shields, etc, etc. So there's a lot that can start to be added to this game board that changes the rules. And rule changes are going to happen throughout the game, throughout the adventure. There's going to be a ton of different things that can happen in this game. It, it's, it's a wild ride. Um, but I think that's pretty much all you need to know really uh, when you get started with this game is that these guys are going to be uh, your movement pieces. And once you have used your movement, you'll take an action. And if you can do what you need to do before the end of the story, you will win. Otherwise, restart it and it'll be different than the first time. I think The Adventures of Robin Hood is probably one of the closest to a sandbox game that I've ever seen, especially along the lines of a storytelling game. This is all cinematic and it's all based around the different uh, adventures of Little John and Robin Hood. And then you have Will as well as um, uh, Maid Marian, and you can play these characters and just visit the world and experience and explore. Now, of course, if you dilly-dally, time will be reduced too quickly and you might fail your mission, but you can also once again repeat it and it'll change how you choose to do the missions. There are clues given to you throughout the game, like for instance one of the scenarios is you need to try and find a safe place to hide from the new king, so to speak, and you're going to be asking townsfolk in the forest and in the city and maybe even in the castle where you can find a place to hide. And it'll give you clues and you might realize you need to stumble upon a place and do a thing and open a secret passageway and get there before the time runs out. All the while, suddenly a guy shows up because um, Prince John is like, oh hell no, we ain't gonna let that slide. So we're gonna send out our trusted Lancer and he's gonna start chasing down Robin Hood and, uh, and, and, and Little John and Maid Marian and all them. And he sees them in the distance and all of a sudden Robin Hood's like, oh no, 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 uh, warn you Little John, Little John, the, the guy's coming after you. <laughs> now, now you can go over here and oh, all of a sudden you can now hide in this hay barrel. And so when this guy comes, he's going to ignore you and he'll move um, he'll move past you and so there's little like tricks and things that you didn't realize could pop up or that you could utilize when going throughout the story. 
each player, all four of you, can play with the different characters. You can also play this all solo mo mode if you want as well. Uh, the only thing is, when you read this book, it usually tells you to have somebody else read so you don't look ahead. Just as long as you don't look ahead, you can actually play this all solo. And you can play with, with all the characters in the game. Uh, it's This game is really freaking cool. Uh, the main objective of this game is not only puzzle solving, but being aware of where the guards are and where they might pop up. Trying to stay in the shade, but also trying to get as much distance as possible. If you need to reach somewhere across the game board, you don't have a lot of turns, you might have to use certain items in order to do so. And you might also have to use your big pieces. Speaking of big pieces though, if you do not use these like super long pieces here, you can actually gain cubes that will help you progress in combat. So maybe I'm playing as as, as Robin Hood here and I want to get to this guy here. Well, I'm going to have some unique challenges, right? I can choose to take these two green ones and connect them, but I'm not going to reach him. So if I don't use this big one, I will make it to him. But if I don't use this big one, I'll also gain a white cube, which I can use for combat. However, if I do use this really long one, I will make it to him. I'll get to take the action, progress the story a little bit, but I'm not going to get this cube, which means it might take longer for people to beat the guards. And because guards might pop up anywhere unexpectedly, then you might have one of your characters become captured. And if that happens, your character might be stuck for even more turns. So you have to make all these unique little decisions throughout the game as you progress. There's going to be these noblemen that pop up in the game board as well which you'll have the opportunity to just fight. And if you fight them, you're gonna gain a reward. And it tells you the reward on these guys here. It'll be like, oh, you get a bag, and you also get two hope. And that's very useful because as hope reduces on this, this track here, if it ever hits zero, not only are you losing one of these tokens whenever you draw a red disc, you'll lose another one for the hope to being at zero. So you wanna try and keep them up as much as possible. But you'll also gain items too, which is really cool. And there are a ton of items represented on the board here, which you can look at in the book and they'll tell you what all the items do. For instance, maybe you get a sword. If you get a sword, then you're going to be able to draw an extra cube from your fighting. So instead of three cubes, you can draw four. Maybe you're going to dual wield, then you can draw an extra cube. So instead of three, you'll get four. And then instead of four, you'll get five. Maybe you're gonna use the horn that will let you redraw a disc from the bag. Maybe you don't want the bad guys to go just that you'd like to go take another turn. Or you could use the keg. It'll let you use an extra one of your teammates' long pieces to move. And there's a ton more that involves the items in this game. And everything that's added onto the game is wonderful as well. Uh, the artwork is stunning. It's easy to tell where you can move. It's easy to tell where the bad guys are going to spot you and where they're not going to spot you. What spaces have a question mark that you can interact with in the specific mission. How each of the pieces move, where each of the pieces move, and the additional rules is palatable. Every time you add a new rule to the game, you've already mastered everything else. So it's not a big deal to then add these little tokens here that once, um, were tracked via the cube, the tokens in the bag. Now we're going to be tracked with these guys here, which will change the position of the guards. It will add bards that will reduce hope in the game and so on and so forth. There are gonna be certain pieces that are going to get uh, removed from the game board. And when they do, I'm just pointing at random pieces here, but when they do, they might never come back. And thusly, it will change the game board in a way that changes the map and adds new things that you can interact with. And so, yeah, you might even be putting additional things inside this bag here that will incorporate the rounds. So that being said, if you like a sandbox game, if you like a storytelling game with choice, it's like a mix of a sandbox, choose your own adventure game. It's palatable, it's easy to understand, it flows. This is a family game. This can be played solo, no problem. I know it says two to four, but it does work great like that as well. And each mission is not too long to uh, overstay its welcome. And even if you have to restart it, it's still gonna be a different game, which is, is really great. I love everything about this game. And in fact, the main reason I was reviewing this game is because I got Robin Hood, Little Friar Tuck in Danger, which is the expansion. And I'm gonna cover that in a whole new review, which will contain spoilers a little bit um, because you've inherently probably played this one if you're doing that one. So if you wanna even know more about this game, then you can watch that review when I finish it. But as for now, just as this game stands, Robin Hood, this is an A+. Um, this is probably one of my favorite Cosmos games at this point. I think that they do a wonderful job of escape rooms and storytelling games, and I love those little storytelling books that you, you, you get with all the different cards. This one, I, I don't know, I just, I haven't seen anything like it. It just does so many unique things to it. 
uh, my one negative, and it's kind of a big negative actually, but I have to say it. Uh, I have no fingernails, and so getting these little pieces of the board is going to result in you damaging the pieces if you are me. If you're my wife and you have nails, then it's not a big deal. You can just pull the pieces out. They're not too bad. Uh, and basically what happens is after you pull the pieces out enough times and put them back in enough times, then somebody like me with no nails can just pull them out and place them back in, and it's, it's not super challenging. But I did run into that throughout the game where I couldn't pull pieces out and it got me very, it was very frustrating. But I don't think there's any way you could have fixed that. And I feel like it's just gonna require somebody to use, get a little tool of some sort or have a wife with nails or you might have nails and then you can get these guys to work. But if that's my only negative, this game is definitely worth checking out. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game, Ra Adventures of Robin Hood. I know there's lots of Robin Hood games. This is called Adventures of Robin Hood by Cosmos. If you like the game, you wanna take a look at it, go ahead and check out the link down below in the description. You can also go to our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Also, don't forget, if you would like, you can go ahead and watch our live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST and Wednesdays on Whatnot at 6.30 p.m. PST. We play games, show games, sell games, do all kinds of fun stuff. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you think we've earned your subscription. If this is more than the first video you watched from us, then go ahead and do so. We would greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. And as always, I look forward to adventuring with you in Nottinghamshire next time.